This is the best PvE build in Deepwoken for beginners. It's designed to be super easy to make, ridiculously tanky because this build's getting 153 HP from talents, and over 90% resistance to both elemental and physical armor. And it's also ridiculously strong, being able to one cycle chaser and kill pretty much any other boss with ease. But the most important thing about this build is it's designed in a way to help you learn a lot of PvE tech. So with this build, if you're new at PvE or just want something easy to make, you can very quickly get better at bosses without much risk of dying. So today I'm going to be covering the stat order for this build, as well as how you actually play it, since there's quite a few ways you can go about it depending on your skill. And as always, if you're interested in picking up this build for yourself, the build maker link will be in my Discord, since there is actually different variants to this build, depending on how much effort you're willing to put into progressing it. Because today I'm just going to be covering the basic version of it, which is designed to be incredibly easy talents wise to get. Once you've played this build for a while and are looking to get into stronger but harder to use PvE builds, the God Slayer V4 as well as its variants are in my Discord, because they are definitely the best PvEs in the game. However, they're not exactly the most beginner friendly. That's why this build exists. And also, I have two very big guides on the way. One showing you how to make the best PvE builds in the game, and another which will cover how to fight all the bosses in the game. So there's some pretty good stuff on the way if you want to learn how to master PvE. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyways, let's get into the build. Alright, so for the race, you can use literally any race you want on this build, although technically Vesperian is the most optimal, but Adret will let you progress quickly. So I'm going to be going with this. Your Oath is going to be Oathless, although if you feel like it, you can put Dawnwalker on this build. Your Bell, it doesn't really matter. In the end, I'd say the best Bell for convenience is probably Run It Back. Outfit is going to be Ignition Deep Delver, just because this gives you the most resistances and the Force Your Way talent is pretty useful for something like Etheron. Your Origin can also be anything. For a beginner, I'd honestly progress this as Lone Warrior, because that's pretty easy to do. But if you prefer something else, by all means, make sure you select that. For your Boons, you can go Autodidact and Scrapper. These are really good Boons to make progressing easy. For your Flaws, while you can go Simple if you want to progress even faster, you can go Obvious and Manic. Although whenever you use Shrine of Order on this build, you can get the Glutton Floor. Although this build is using Shrine of Order, don't worry, it's very easy to get all the cards you need pre-Shrine. Anyways, for your starting achievements, you want to go 6 into Gale Breath and 4 into Frost Draw. For your starting stats, don't invest anything in the starting menu, because we're immediately going to go to 50 Willpower. Next, you go to 40 Fortitude. This is for some good defense talents. Then we go 30 Strength. This is for Berserker, which is an insanely good defense talent that we'll get into later. Then you jump up to 50 Fortitude, and then from here you go 1 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, and 1 Agility. Obviously because of racial stuff, I have 3 Charisma, but I've invested 1 point, which is all that matters. Now you'll have 3 points until you level up, so you just put them into either element. I'm just going to put them into Frost Draw. So now we can Shrine of Order at power 9. However, if you don't have enough knowledge, you can either do the knowledge quests in the overworld, or you could actually freely invest more points into your Frost Draw without losing anything. So if you're missing any cards or knowledge, you can go all the way up to 52 or 54 Frost Draw. It just depends what you put these 6 points into. So power 12 is the latest you can Shrine. However, if you're able to do it at power 9, that's even better. Now let's Shrine of Order, and as stated before, you want to try to get the Glutton Floor. From here you go 25 Charisma, 25 Intelligence, 25 Agility, then we go all the way to 40 Agility, this is for Ghost, then we go to 80 Frost Draw and 80 Gale Breath. Now you're going to have some spare points left over. However, if you got a good pre-shrine and were able to shrine earlier, then everything will be put to 16 per shrine. So once you invest all your points, you can have up to 12 spare investment points. Now it doesn't really matter where you put these, although I'd recommend doing 20 strength for Spine Cutter. Now this build is going to be dealing very low M1 damage. 
damage. But learning how to spine cutter enemies is very important, especially for any build that has high M1 damage. So I'd recommend taking 20 strength for learning purposes. Obviously, get 20 strength before your element. As for what element you do first, it doesn't really matter too much, since both achievements have a lot of good mantras that you need and a lot of useful talents. As for your remaining points, it doesn't matter at all where you put them, so I'm just going to put them back into Fortitude. For your traits, you want to go 6 Vitality and 6 Song Chant. This will give you insane mantra damage and health. Now for the talents, I'm going to go over all the required talents for this build. Although there is optional ones that you can get, that build make link will be in my Discord. Condition Runner, this is really good for Chaser and Atheron, as you're getting passive regen all the time. You want to get Ghost for Atheron's ult, as well as Escaping Floor 2. Then we get Perfect Flash for 25% more damage. And then you can also get Ever Changing Aegis for some elemental resistance. Next, get Spine Cutter. While well, you don't have to get this, again, it's very good for learning how to use it properly. Then you get Fishman, Exoskeleton, and To the Finish. These are your two high fortitude cards and can be somewhat annoying to get, but seeing as how many extra powers you can take pre shrine, you'll get them very easily. Get Neuroplasticity. Then we want to get Thresher Claws, Warrior's Respite, and Loot Skipper. Three very good talents. Then you can take Blood Iron Spirit and Scuba Drowner for 10 HP. Then you want to get Kickoff for the Climb Height as well as Time to Go. Then you want to get Grand Feast. This is to counteract the effects of Glutton and give you essentially infinite hunger. Then we can go Giant Slayer for more damage to large monsters as well as Underdog. Then you want to get Freezing Weight. This is very useful for Gale as well as get Tough Love. Now purely so we can see the perfect Flash damage multiplier on this screen, I'm going to take Nullifying Clarity and Charge Return. Do not get these on the actual build, they are not required at all. This is just so I can show you what Perfect Flash as well as a Ring of Casters would do, since this number right here is the damage multiplier of M1s. So again, don't get these two, they're for demonstration purposes. Then you're going to get Frost Draw Unbounded and Master Frost Draw for free. This gives you 15 HP, it's super useful. Get Orbital Ice for more damage reduction, and you'll also get the same thing for Gale Breath Unbound. Then you want to get Inhale and Aftercut for more damage. You can get Crystallization. These two cards you can get, but they aren't required. Then you want to get Wind Step for a nice double jump, as well as Old Habits Die Hard and Breathing Exercises for more HP. Then you want to get Berserker. This gives you 20% damage resistance for 15 seconds after killing a monster. Very useful in general. If you want to get Armor Conserver, this is useful for stuff like Etheron. Then you can also get Replenishing Knockout. Again, just another useful card if you're fighting a lot of monsters. Then you can get Turtle Shell and Knight's Rally, two very useful cards. There is Spectre Path, you really don't have to get this, it doesn't make a huge difference in my opinion, but since we'll have a lot of spare talents at the end, feel free to. Then coming down here, the last thing we need is Matador, pretty much just for Chaser. Now whilst it says 46 cards, keep in mind we got some extras like these two, and you don't actually have to get stuff like Spine Cutter if you're running short on talents. This is a very easy build to get, don't worry. Then for mantras, you want to get Warden's Blades and Frozen Servants, as well as Ice Cubes and Ice Flock. All of these Ice Mantras deal a ton of damage. Then you want to get Tornado, as well as Astral Wind. These two deal insane damage to monsters. Then we're going to get Gale Launch for just movement in general. Next, we're going to get Ice Skates for Layer 2. This will allow you to traverse terrain very easily. And we're going to get Taunt for your support mantra. And this is everything that you'll need. Now, you can actually change change out a few of the mantras depending on what you want to do. For example, if you're planning to do more stuff like do Ferryman or even Hell Mode, you want to use Ice Carve instead of something like Frozen Servants. Obviously, if you don't plan to do Hell Mode and just plan to fight bosses, then don't take Ice Carve. And whenever you want to get a little more advanced in Layer 2, you can take Glacial Arc. This is just to do some more advanced tech, which allows you to go up really fast. To replace Glacial Arc, you can just take out Ice Block or something. But again, for a beginner, this assortment of mantras is perfectly fine. If you're wondering about the gems on all of them, I just put blues on everything, but put a blessed gem on Warden's Blades. Due to the fact that I often change my modifiers because I find more advanced stuff, the modifiers for the mantras will be in my Discord. Now for your weapon, we're actually going to be doing something very interesting here. We are going to take 
the Apprentice Rapier because it has zero requirements on the weapon. This is very important because we're going to be using Grim on it. If you don't know, when you use the Rapier crit, you hit a few times, which means whenever Chaser comes down, you use the Rapier crit with Grim and you proc Grim, giving you 20% extra damage. Coming down here, as you can see, a Ring of Hearthstone and Perfect Flash is giving you absolutely insane damage for your mantras. And then for your rings, you can just use whatever rings you want. Although you don't actually need to use any rings apart from an Ishans and Ring of Casters, just because your M1 damage on this build doesn't really matter. Now let me just briefly add the rest of the quest talents that you'll already have by default. Okay, once you've got all the quest talents, as well as the Oathless card, you'll be getting a grand total of 156 HP, which is very crazy. This is tankier than a lot of hell mode builds, and considering how mobile you are and how easy this build is to use, you can very easily find success with it. And this has been how to make the build. Now I'm going to tell you some of the tech with this build, as well as what makes it so easy to use compared to most other builds. This PvE build is so good for beginners because mages don't need to worry about stuff like M1s. Instead of M1ing something and mistiming it, causing you to get hit, you simply just throw out your mantras and let them deal the damage for you. As mentioned before, the only time you're using something that isn't a damaging mantra is the rapier crit or the taunt in order to get a damage buff. Then you'll simply just use Warden's Blades followed by Tornado to get insane damage to whatever you're fighting. The other damage mantras like Astral Wind just come out insanely quick, so their fast cast time allows you to get damage on enemies before they can hit you. And very importantly, once you've cast Tornado, you want to let it stay out for as long as possible. This means not attacking or using any other mantras until it ends. Otherwise, you'll attack and it'll make it disappear. Ghost is also super good for learning how to dodge stuff, since you can dodge Etheron's ult very easily or deal with the snipers in layer 2. The sheer amount of damage resistance and HP this build has lets you tank pretty much anything as well, so most of the time you're going to be healing back more from Condition Runner than you take, so it's very good for learning the parry timings on stuff. And this build is one cycling chaser as well, once you get good enough. All you have to do is build up max chain on a bone keeper beforehand. Even if you don't have chain already, you can just use the gale and frost from this build to kill fairyman and get it. It shouldn't take too many tries. Also, this build having spine cutter makes it super useful for learning a lot of tech in PvE, since a lot of more complicated builds like my god slave v4 use spine cuttering to get extra chain stacks and damage. So while spine cuttering isn't exactly the most optimal thing on this build, it's good to learn. The final thing that makes this build so good is it's just easy to progress. You can very easily get this build done first try in a few hours, seeing as there is so much wiggle room pre and post shrine. And it's pretty easy to see good results on this build, as long as you're able to get the mantra timings down and not get hit all the time, then even a newer PvE player or a casual PvE player will find success on this build and just have fun with it, since that's what PvE builds are all about. Having fun with the build and the scale frost, 156 talent HP, 90% damage resistance mage is a pretty fun and a pretty easy PvE build that can still do some insane damage. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you want to get the build maker links or see any other future PvE builds I make, then make sure to join the Discord and like and subscribe for some more PvE content. And I'll see you all next time.